Welcome to another Daily Cinephile Vlog. And as we are back in the movie room, I actually have something interesting to talk about. Um, and I know we had previously talked about uh, some of these editions that they have now from Paramount. So uh, Paramount Presents, which um, is kind of an interesting thing that's been going on. Paramount has started to release a lot of movies on Blu-ray. Um, which, you know, is like, why is that news? Well, it's news because um, it kind of tells me that the studios haven't fully given up on the Blu-ray format yet. And whereas, you know, Warner Brothers kind of has, you know, Warner Archive now where everything's kind of released exclusively online, on demand. Uh, Paramount has actually done something different where they're actually working to release a lot of movies on Blu-ray that never been available on Blu-ray or never had that great of releases on Blu-ray, and give them really high quality, like, special editions. In some cases, I've heard some complaints. Um, I know that they have a Blu-ray out there of To Catch a Thief, uh, the Hitchcock film, which, you know, I actually I have the 2012, I think this is the 2012 Blu-ray here, yeah, um, which I've heard people say that this transfer is actually better than the new one that they released with the Paramount Presents line, so... Uh, I, I, at this moment, I don't know if I'll end up getting that or not, but uh, they also announced the other day that the 100-year-old the silent film, The Sheik, is actually going to be released, uh, uh, Paramount Presents. So, like, you know, it's kind of all over the place what they're releasing, because I know initially they released, like, uh, Pretty in Pink, Ghost, you know, some of these really popular Paramount movies, and then, you know, they got to work on doing things like, you know, Roman Holiday, which, you know, never really had a Blu-ray release. Um, but then out of nowhere, they're also doing, like, pretty, like, for general audiences, uh, pretty obscure releases. So The Sheik, like, it's awesome. It's been, oh, it's a hundred-year-old film, and from my understanding, I think it only ever had a Kino Blu-ray release that I think is out of print at this point. But it's, like, it's incredible that they are actually releasing that, uh, that Paramount's doing it, not just giving it to some other company to do, because, you know, silent film releases don't always sell the best unless they're going to be done through, like, Criterion or Kino or, you know, I guess even maybe Shout. Well, actually, I actually don't even know of many silent films that have been released uh, through the Shout factory. Um, but Criterion, yeah, I could totally see them taking on the silent film. But for Paramount to release it themselves, it's kind of, it's just interesting. It's interesting that Paramount's kind of taking it themselves and, you know, on top of that, it's not like um, they're only doing these Paramount Presents releases. They're also doing a bunch of different releases for their older, you know, movies that have never been released on Blu-ray. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, I actually got two more here. So this is actually my stack that I still have to get to for uh, Monday Movie Pickup. Um, I should also note uh, Universal has started to do a lot of Blu-ray releases as well. Um some of them, they're, you know, letting other companies do releases for uh, them. But, you know, like, for instance, like, I got the Smoking the Bandit 3 movie collection. They finally did the sequels on Blu-ray, which I just got, I got to say, I'm, I'm I'm shocked. I'm just shocked that we're still getting so many movies on Blu-ray at this point when I've been told that Blu-ray is a dead format. It's like, yeah, it definitely is like everything's going digital, you know, obviously, and digital is kind of the way to go. And I understand that. And especially for like the storage part of it. I, I totally get that. But that the, the whole point though is that Blu-ray is still like the best way to watch anything, you know, especially if you're hitting like the ultra 4K discs, um, which I haven't gotten into just because, you know, even if you compare that to a Blu-ray, I'm like, Blu-ray is still very, very, very good. Um, it, there's even like, I, I don't even know like if the human eye can experience 4K the way that it's supposed to be experienced. Or, you know, I've heard those rumors, but... Uh, I guess I've never <laughs> actually read up on it, but uh, I haven't started a 4K collection, really. I'm good with Blu-ray. I don't need to discuss that again. Uh, basically, though, I have these other releases, though. So what's really cool is that, you know, The Greatest Showman... Oh, Greatest Showman. No. Similar title, but this is The Greatest Show on Earth. So this was a very unpopular, actually, uh, Oscar winner for Best Picture because a lot of people say that this shouldn't have won. Uh, but the main point is, is that this movie did not have a Blu-ray release for many years. Even though, you know, it won an Oscar, despite the fact that some people don't agree with that win, it still won an Oscar. It was kind of weird that there's not a Blu-ray release of it. There's actually quite a number of Best Picture winners that haven't been released on Blu-ray. I mean, here's the Best Picture winners here. Like, you know, Hamlet still hasn't gotten a Blu-ray release in the States. Um, 
The Life of Emile Zola, The Great Siegfeld, Cimarron, Broadway Melody. All those movies haven't been released on Blu-ray. I've discussed in those Monday movie pickups maybe why they haven't been released on Blu-ray. Um, but yeah, like, Greatest Show on Earth is, like, you know, from the 50s. And even this didn't have a Blu-ray release. Um, even, like, Around the World in 80 Days doesn't have a Blu-ray release. So it's, it's it was weird. So finally, The Greatest Show actually did get a Blu-ray release through the Paramount Presents line, which is awesome. Um, just as a person who's trying to get all the, you know, best picture films on Blu-ray. But the main one I want to talk about was Almost Famous. So I have seen this movie. I wasn't as into it as I was, you know, kind of hoping I would be. I was actually quite excited to watch this movie. And, and it was okay. Um... But the main thing I wanted to talk about is actually the copy I owned was right here. So this is the bootleg uh, cut. And the bootleg cut was the only way you could get this movie for many years. and Or on Blu-ray anyway. The, the DVD release did have the theatrical cut. But if you got it on Blu-ray, you'd only be able to get the bootleg cut in the States at least. And it, it's one of those weird things where I've talked about this a little bit on some other videos before but i'm not a fan of doing this if you're gonna release something on blu-ray release all the cuts um especially when it's like maybe not everyone likes the director's cut maybe some people like the theatrical cut you know there's some cases where more people do like the director's cut um but to me i'm like release all the cuts you know this, we complain about this with star wars all the time but it goes for all movies you know if you're gonna release something on blu-ray um Release all the cuts. Maybe not everyone wants to watch only the bootleg cut, Cameron Crowe. Well, guess what? I saw this edition from Paramount Presents, which, uh, new artwork, which is, um, I do like this new artwork. To be honest, I'm not, uh, as much, I kind of, the original poster's okay, you know, it's got an interesting style to it, but, you know, I, I, I do like this new artwork, even though it just ends up being a bunch of faces of the actors. They, I actually think there's like a nice composition going on there. And, you know, even in the inside flap, they do have the original poster. I'll show it really quick. Um, which, by the way, this is the original poster. Um, so it's just Kate Hudson's face. Like, yeah. Cool. But this bootleg cut actually kind of added some, like, newspaper... Uh, material to it to make up her face so it's like it's a little more interesting of a cover i do kind of prefer this cover um but i thought that's all it was going to be i thought paramount was just re-releasing this on blu-ray some of these you know paramount presents line blu-rays have just been newer transfers that don't have any new special features it's just a re-release basically because it's it's due for a re-release it hasn't had a blu-ray release in many years and then to my shock as i was reading up about it they actually have the theatrical cut. Yeah, they have both cuts on here. After many years since this has been released on, you know, Blu-ray originally with the bootleg cut. After all this time and the fact that people have said that Blu-ray's dying, they actually released the theatrical cut on Blu-ray. I don't even know if the theatrical cut was like available digitally. So I was kind of shocked. I was like, serious? It's almost like, you know, weirdly enough, like the studios are listening to the fans. And I'm trying to dig this out right now because I'm trying to show you. It's not just a, a one disc thing either. No, no, no. They, 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 there's two discs in here. Look at that. Um, it's always fun doing this with one hand, isn't it? But... Look at that. The theatrical cut and the bootleg cut. And uh, so this is a Paramount movie, which, you know, and I said before, I, I wasn't, like, so in love with the movie. But the fact that there is the theatrical cut now, I probably will watch this movie again in the future and watch the theatrical cut. And, you know, I, I'm, sh I'm sure there will be some arguments out there that maybe the bootleg cut in general is better. And I'm like, yeah, you know, and more power to it. And maybe I'd agree, too. At least now I have the actual option to watch both cuts. You get that? Like, I'm actually able to watch both cuts now and compare myself. I don't need to just have everyone else decide for me or, you know, let the popular opinion decide for me which cut is better. Or to let 
the studio itself decide for me which cut is better and only release that cut because, you know, there was a theatrical cut. There was something people saw in theaters. The movie was liked when it was in theaters. So whatever was shown in theaters, it, people <laughs> must have liked, right? Um, you know, there's other cases where I'm I'm pretty, you know, I'm about to kind of go out here with no knowledge, but I'm pretty sure once upon a time in America, so the director's cut is much more popular than the theatrical cut. I think this Blu-ray release only has the uh, the one cut on there. Oh, wait, no, that that's a lie. This actually has the theatrical cut. Okay, so let me change what I was going to say. <laughs> Once Upon a Time in America is a great Blu-ray release because it actually has both cuts. There's two discs, and even though the theatrical cut is, you know, overall people say the director's cut's way better and that to an extent that the theatrical cut's not even good, which is really interesting. It's, it's very rare that, like, a movie has that much of a turn where it's, like, one cut is so much better than the other. Like, I don't even know what the difference between the two almost famous cuts are, but, you know, my argument is that they should just both be available. That's it. Like, I'm not trying to make an argument that, you know, oh, there's only, like, oh, there's maybe one additional scene or something. No, it's, like, my argument is I don't care if there are two cuts of a film, release them all. But here's a case where, like, these are such different cuts of the film to the point where some critics hated the theatrical cut but loved the director's cut. And yet they still release both. Even if no one's ever going to watch a theatrical cut ever again, they still release both. Because that's how it should be. You should allow people to watch both cuts. So the point I'm trying to get to, though, is that since uh, Almost Famous finally had a Blu-ray release of the theatrical cut alongside the bootleg cut... There was one movie I wanted to bring up that I absolutely adore that has only ever been available on Blu-ray in the director's cut. That's Tropic Thunder. I actually have the DVD inside here because it has the um, DVD cut, which is just a theatrical cut. Uh, but this, the theatrical cut's never been released on Blu-ray. It's always been a director's cut. But if you look, if I can get to it. Oh, this is actually DreamWorks. <laughs> So never mind, maybe my point's destroyed. I thought this was a Paramount movie. Um, I think DreamWorks might have had Paramount handle the distribution at the time. Um, so maybe that's why I thought it was a Paramount movie, but it's not. But still, overall, I'm still hoping that this movie someday gets a theatrical cut along with the director's cut. Because I I prefer the theatrical cut to the director's cut of Tropic Thunder. Um, even though director's cut you know, it only adds like a, a couple extra scenes to it. I like the theatrical cut better. I thought it was a superior film. And that's a case where I would love to have the theatrical cut on Blu-ray, but it doesn't, it doesn't exist on Blu-ray, not in the States anyway. So they need to change that. And the fact that Almost Famous figured it out gives me hope that all these other movies that have done that same kind of sin will figure it out as well. Take the almost famous approach. Take the once upon a time in America approach. It's about time, Blu-ray, because if, if Paramount's doing it this late in the game, so can everyone. I don't think there's too many cases like this. I mean, some some movies need to do it right away. I mean, hell, look, like, randomly enough, if I can find it, um, Anchorman... <laughs> Love Anchorman and Anchorman 2. This has got both films. But actually, Anchorman 2, as you can see there, has the unrated version, the theatrical version, and the supersized R-rated version. That was the one that they re-released in theaters where it had a bunch of alternative jokes, um, kind of a longer movie, and it was R-rated. Um, but yeah, there's three cuts of the film. Three cuts of this film existed, and they had all cuts. That goes for this, you know, Blu-ray too. There are two versions of the original film, and then there's the uh, Wake Up Ron Burgundy, which is like a collection of alternate takes, alternate scenes. A perfect Blu-ray set. Just has everything right away. So, all movies should be like that. <laughs>